Uh, my name is um, Ellen Goldman in Career Services. And what we're going to do for the format is uh, today is we're first going to do an introduction from each of the panelists, um, just talking a little bit about what their role is in sales because it's such a diverse um, sales, it's such a diverse field. And then what's one misperception that they had about sales before they entered the field? And they'll announce any open positions that they know about from internships um, on up through entry level and beyond. My name is Hillary Green and I graduated from Gettysburg College in Pennsylvania in 2010 with a management and French double major. So not really um, from the same university background as most people here. So I do have a little bit of a unique background in that I didn't initially seek uh, um, an entry level sales career or sales at all. Um, and I actually came across this opportunity within AT&T which was a six month training program called the Business Sales Leadership Development Program. And what it is is an intensive program that's geared towards business to business sales um, where we go to Atlanta, there's a group of about 20 students that starts each month. And um, the training split between AT&T's history product line and the telecoms industry, and, uh, the major players in the industry as well as sales fundamentals. Um, and actually during the program I built and maintained a client portfolio, uh, cold called and developed a customer base as well as um, engaged my field partner from AT&T who I worked closely with. And I was initially drawn to this program mainly because AT&T is such a big name and I knew that AT&T as a company wasn't going anywhere in the near future. Um, initially the telecom industry is constantly evolving and changing. Um, even since I've started working in the industry there are always new devices and new applications and methods of technology coming out. So that was something that appealed to me. Um, given that I had no technology or telecom experience whatsoever, um, it certainly was interesting to get involved and to dive right into that. Um, so as I mentioned, sales was not the field that I had initially sought to, to start my career in. I had some past experience working for an environmental campaign, and I realized that that was something I was good at, was talking to people and getting them to listen to me and what I had to say. Um, and that's when I really developed the mindset that I had the personality for sales and for a career in sales. Um, so after speaking to several people who had completed the training program in Atlanta, I figured that it was really an invaluable training program and experience that would help me pursue a career within AT&T and wherever I decided to go in the future. I'm Peter Cervezis from Disney and ESPN Media Networks, uh, based in Bristol, Connecticut. I am a 2008 graduate of the School of Journalism, so similar to your story, I did not pursue a, a career in sales initially, uh, didn't think I would end up in sales, but you know, thankfully I did, and thankfully I landed a great company. So uh, I did a co-op program with ESPN, the same group I'm in now, affiliate sales and marketing, and while we are based in, based in Bristol and ESPN, we are the distribution arm of the Walt Disney Company. So not only are we ESPN, but we license content for Disney Channel, Disney XD, Disney Junior, ABC, and ABC Family. So we're not just ESPN, uh, which is something that was you know, interesting to get used to, having, you know, being obsessed with sports and having to learn about you know, preschool programming and selling preschool programming to cable affiliates was... Uh, was interesting but exciting at the same time. So did my co-op, was fortunate enough to be hired as a full-time employee upon graduating from, uh, from Northeastern. Uh, I report to a team of seven people that our territory is spread out across the entire Eastern Division. So everything from Massachusetts all the way through, uh, through Florida, uh, working with the Comcast, Comcast Communications, Charter Communications, and what we call NCTCs or our smaller cable affiliates. So, we really drive the value and demand for uh, Disney and ESPN media networks. I'm uh, Aaron Barmack with Forrester Research. Um, Forrester, for those of you that don't know, we're a global research organization. Uh, we focus in helping leaders in the IT and marketing sectors really make decisions um, about their organization more effectively, more efficiently. Some of the, the companies of the panel that, that's here are clients of ours, so we're helping them make marketing decisions um, about their social media campaigns, about uh, a number of different things that a, that a CMO may be thinking about 
um, from a marketing perspective, and then we're also doing that for IT professionals as well. So making decisions from a, uh, a technology perspective. That's what Forrester does. Um, so from my standpoint, I very similar to the, to the first two panel members, I, I'm a Northeastern graduate, 95 for business, 98 for education. I was going to be a teacher. Um, I was going to teach and coach in high school. I did my student teaching, um, got out, started looking at, uh, at jobs in the teaching world. Um, but I was also looking at business was, was certainly a large part, so I was looking at other opportunities as well. And I saw this job posting back when they first started putting internet postings uh, out there for jobs. But I um, saw a job posting that said College Aerotech. And I thought that was appealing to me because I had just come out of college and uh, wanted my college experience to continue and, uh, and thought that um, this sounded like something interesting. It was a paragraph that was written that I thought was interesting. Had no idea what the opportunity was. Um, went in, interviewed, and found out that you know, it, was, it was really a great place because I could use my, the culture seemed great, people were having fun in the office. It was a, it was a sales environment, not something that I ever thought I would get into. But I did, and I enjoyed it. I was with that organization for 12 years before leaving um, to go to Forrester Research. I've been there for about two and a half years. And um, in those two and a half years, I first worked as an account manager. So I was managing a group of accounts, um, accounts like Avis Rent-A-Car, accounts like um, Ann Taylor, Chanel, um, accounts like that, where it was my job to manage that account, manage the relationship that we had in place with that company and also grow that, that, uh, that company's account as well. I'm Jenna Lepore, uh, Northeastern grad, 2008, a happy husky, and formerly of Google up until about two weeks ago. So um, in the transition role and excited about it, but um, give you a little background. I actually started Northeastern as an MIS concentration. So I've been all over the board. Uh, originally it was actually BSIB, for those of you that are not business majors, it's international business. I switched over to marketing uh, because it gave me a lot more flexibility when I was overseas. Uh, worked for Merrill Lynch on the trading floor, great experience. That is when I got my first taste of sales. I actually did a sales um, class, sales management for Professor Dunn, um, senior year, and I think that's really when I started to um, understand what sales truly was and uh, that I thought or think that it's, it's where I'm supposed to be. At Google, I was recruited to come on to start their local commerce division. And what that essentially means is Google has always been selling to uh, big businesses, those that spend tens of thousands of millions of dollars in advertising. And it's the first time that they saw a niche in the small and medium business and they're trying to broaden that. So their first attempt to do so was through Google Offers. And are you familiar with Google Offers? Which is Google's response to Groupon, Living Social, and all the daily deal sites. It's their way of building relationships. So I was responsible for selling uh, Google Offers, Google Wallet, another cool product that Google has, and Google Places, their business pages, and um, starting these relationships and really trying to get a stronghold on um, the small and medium business, which Google has never spoken to before. And prior to that, I sold to General Electric globally uh, at EMC, which I can speak to as well. I graduated from Ithaca College uh, in 2007 with a marketing and finance degree. Uh, while I was at Ithaca, I had two internships at Johnson & Johnson uh, at their headquarters office down in uh, Skillman, New Jersey. Upon graduation, I entered their sales and leadership development program which is a two-year program where a majority of college hires start within J&J &J sales. Upon completing that program, uh, I went into a more analytical role. So coming out of that, which is a very similar role to our sales leadership development program, I was supporting uh, my current role that I'm in now. So doing a lot of the analytics around the four Ps, so around price, doing analysis on uh, my customer CVS, but all right, so how does our price compare to Walgreens, Walmart, Target, those other retailers in the marketplace? Uh, placement, so where does our product sit on the shelf versus our competition or versus other retailers in the marketplace? Uh, promotion, so if you walk into CVS and you see the end caps as you're walking in the store, we develop with CVS what goes on those end caps, what the price of those end caps are going to be, as well as the circular execution. So if you walk in the store, you'll see a, circu a paper circular that you can 
see with whatever the weekly offers and sales are, or if you have an extra care card, which is their big loyalty database program, you could also get an email to you uh, via uh, your email account. Uh, so that is, it's a very different when you think about, from a sales perspective, that you're just going in and selling whatever you're selling. It's really taking a marketing plan, taking the new products and innovation that's coming to the marketplace, and really differentiating your customer and how you can bring that to life uh, within retail. So My name is Sun Kyung Park. Um, a lot of people call me SK. Um, I work at Kate Spade, New York, and I'm an international market coordinator. Um, I graduated from Northeastern in 2011, so I was here last year for commencement. And um, I started at Northeastern undecided, not knowing what I wanted to major in. I switched majors maybe about two or three times and finally landed on international business. So I was part of the BSIB program with a concentration in finance and on the Spanish language track. I spent my last year of college in Mexico and I worked at, I co opted at the W Mexico City in the hospitality industry and I worked in sales and marketing. Prior to that co-op, I was at Akamai Technologies over in Cambridge. Great co-op. I worked in investor relations, um, worked with sell-side, buy-side analysts, and it gave me a lot of exposure to different industry events and especially in um, the tech world. I started in July, so I've been there for about, about 10 months now. And right now, I'm on a team of about eight people on our international team. We focus on growing the Kate Spade New lifestyle brand in um, or just all around the world. Hi, my name is Alex Hayes. Um, I work for Phillips. Uh, that's a pretty broad statement considering Phillips employs more people in Massachusetts second to the state. Um, so Phillips owns a lot of companies. Uh, I specifically work in their lighting division. So I graduated from Bryant University in 2007. Um, did an internship at Caterpillar, so heavy equipment um, machinery. Did that for a year, so I was an inside sales position there at one customer service. Uh, it was great for you know helping out with uh, me being more comfortable with customers uh, and interactions um, such as that. I work with architects, engineers, specifiers, whoever decides what goes into buildings, um, educating them on new technologies, showing them new products, helping them design the systems, um, and pretty much following up and closing the job. My name is Tim Zhu. I uh, graduated from MIT in 1999 and I work for the Boston Red Sox as the Director of Business Development and uh, Vice President of Fenway Sports Management, which is our sports marketing sister company. Um, my main role, the best way for me to describe the role, is I try to help the Red Sox make money. And uh, we use that money obviously to pay for the players mostly, but that involves selling tickets, selling sponsorships, selling hot dogs, selling Red Sox Nation memberships, fantasy camps, Red Sox road trips, etc. I actually started as an unpaid intern in the summer of 2003, in between teaching eighth grade math uh, to you know my third and fourth year teaching. So I was lucky enough to get the sort of the classic cliche foot in the door, you know, get the foot in the door, and then just don't let them shut the foot on your door. Um, so when they asked me to leave, I sort of said, No, I'm going to stay, and I kind of convinced them. So anyway, um, that's pretty much my background. I'm Susan from WGBH, and I should start by telling you that I love my job as local sales manager for the sponsorship team at WGBH. My own kind of progression, like so many people's, um, uh, was not direct. I was actually a music major briefly, so um, it was real divergence from where I started. And I, I ended up in my um, early career on the ad agency side of the business, and so people were selling to me, and um, I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm tough enough, I don't know if I can do this. I was, I was scared, you know, to think that maybe I didn't have the right personality type or whatever to do it. And I have to say, we haven't touched too much on this, but I think what's potentially relevant for all of you is that I decided to take the leap because I wanted to make some money. So um, I was pretty quickly making a heck of a lot more money in my first media sales position than I was on the advertising agency side of the business. And that kind of trajectory of growth continues. Uh, it's a little no guts, no glory sometimes for people, but there's no question, in my opinion, that if you um, think you have the aptitude and you have kind of an entrepreneurial spirit because it requires self-motivation for sure, that, you know, it's really an interesting field.